Alright team, welcome back to Spycraft, the great game. Let's play part 8. It's only been like, you know, months since I've been here, so that's good. Alright, so last time we learned about the unfortunate death of Parker. We learned that Lang is disappeared or dead or captured or something. And we learned about the pickle hammer and what you would do in the Grand Canyon. Let's finish that investigation. Um, let's go back to this news group here and actually look into the ones we're supposed to look into, the Gog and Magog. 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 Words. Okay. This is laid out really stupidly. It's from top to bottom. Oops. But also from left to right. So you go all the way back here and then start at the bottom and move up. I don't get it. Anyway. Gog and Magog. Then treaty is the end of your pathetic little regime. All you clowns in power are tumbling down, so smoke them if you got them. Sissies. Okay, good message. President Brooks isn't fooling everybody. This is about his re-election. Yankee scum, they're doing stuff. Sure. And uh, Jesus was a Capricorn. That's really all you need to know there. If you noticed on these first two, the message headers were irregular. Curious. Let's import these into our cipher tool. See if maybe they're Beal codes. They sure look like Beal codes. Ding. Link established to National Security Agency. Thank you. Okay, let's go with the rabbit hound. Decryption successful. Onyx, Procat has come through for you again. I have acquired a nuclear pit. Send final payment and come solo to the agreed meeting. Mirage. Link established to National Security Onyx Agency. Onyx's response. Mirage. Decryption payment successful. For high pit sent. I will attend meeting as planned. Alright, well that doesn't sound good. David. I sure hope I'm wrong about this. But it sounds like this message is referring to a nuclear pit. You know, the part that goes boom. It does sound like that, David, I agree. Alright, he's put together an Onyx case file for us that we will get to in due time. Link established to National C Case Officer Thorne. Thorn, when I said to get to the bottom of things, I wasn't expecting him to blow up in our face. Good that you found this connected to the Procat hoodlums. Putting focus on putting Onyx out of business. The pit has more political repercussions than he cares to ponder. Thank you, Pete. Glad that you're worried about the politics of it rather than the you know the boom. What's up, Max? Thorn, it's Max. I just got a call from Birdsong. He's running scared. I tried to reason with him, but. He wants no part of us. I'll put Birdsong's dossier and the recording of the call up on Intel Link. Oh, and you want to check out his apartment for any clues. You'd be discreet, I'm sure. I'll keep you posted. Thanks, Thorne. I will be discreet, Max. Thank you. Okay, let's take a look at our ops manager. Mission directives for case officer Thorne. See what Aunt B is up to. Younger. Patricia. Hi, Aunt B. Okay. Investigate Birdsong's residence, yes. Ooh, we still haven't called Blake. We need to do that. Okay. Yeah, let's try to catch up a little bit here because. While you can do much of this game out of order, uh, some things will start happening out of order and not make as much sense. So let's call John Blake with the fucking long phone number. Okay. 
ten forty four one seventy one John Blake here. Hi, John Blake. My name is Thorne. Yes, Thorne. How can I be of assistance? Oh, Cat. I thought the agency closed the books on them. Why the new interest? Really? Hmm. Let me guess. Korean woman known by several names. Marie Cho, Ying, Chong Wang, and Debbie Gibson come to mind. She's an acquisition specialist. Used to be with the Korean intelligence before Procat recruited her. That's her. Debbie Gibson. Ah, yes. David Holt. An excellent tracker. But alas, the boy lost his nerve at a key point in poor print. Nearly compromised the mission, I'm afraid. I've quite a bit more data, but I can't share it over the phone. Okay. Any time would be fine. I'm at home more or less all day, except for the odd trip to town for groceries or a new musical release. I'd welcome a chance to chat. He has a lot of information. Case Officer Thorne, welcome to Interlink. My contacts at MI6 say he's out of touch. Let's check him out. Yes, I agree. Let's check him out. London. The disc swapping thing. So much nicer than the old days where I had to swap the discs. Nice house. I'm in the back. Hey. Go to the back. Come on, I've been expecting you. Uh, Blake. Please, have a seat. I really hope he's just been sitting at that chair since I called him from Russia. I'd hoped this Procat affair would stay in the distant past, where it belongs. I was working with the agency to take down Nikolai Melnikov. They called him the Butcher of Jehalabad because he terrorized the locals by putting bombs in children's toys. After Afghanistan, he turned capitalist and went on to form Procat. You know, it means for hire in Russian. No, I didn't know that, John. Bloody bastard. We had to do something. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'll gather that information I promised you. Why is my sound cutting out? This program is so intense. All of its 1995 glory. Alright, so he's got a cheap boombox with some really questionable earbuds plugged into it. Arthur Conan Doyle book. And a laptop with a giant trackball and those weird wrist pads people used to have. Here you go. You'll need this more than I ever will. Thanks, John. I call this my Encyclopedia Procat. It's dumb. A compendium of facts and figures and Procat activity, past and present. As far as I know, there are no more than a handful of spy mercenaries. Don't be fooled, though. They're all lethal in their individual ways. Everything I know about Procat is in this folio. I have several stored at strategic locations, as a precaution. The fuck does that mean? If Melnikov isn't in his grave, don't you think he might come after the man who tried to put him there? Yes. Why would have the yellow pages are no mere academic exercise. Consider them a survival manual. Put them to good use during your investigation. If only I could be sure that I put him in his grave. The car exploded, yes. But I had to withdraw once the device was planted, and Six never confirmed the kill. 
Probably only a formality, but a professional likes to be thorough. Apparently, the new leader doesn't want to suffer Melnikov's fate. He's known only by his code name, Mirage. And that's exactly what the bugger is. No photographs, sightings, not even a bloody shadow. I'd wager even Procat members don't know who he is. Or her. No reason Mirage has to be a man. Okay, good, good chat, Dave. Or John, whatever your name is. No, no, it was my pleasure. Okay, good talk. Back to Moscow. Case Officer Thorne. Welcome. I've authorized Sterling to give you access to the offices of Holt and Seton for any intelligence our investigation may require. Okay. Let's actually go handle that real quick. <laughs> Transcript from Birdsong in the beginning. Here, stop the mafia. Blah blah blah. We'll kill Dubensky and then they will attack Brooks. The word in Russian is pro cat. It means for hire. conversation. Ah, but for you the end is really badly redacted. Unless you redacted it yourself, but that wouldn't make sense. Maybe because it mentions ProCat and she's not cleared on that, I guess. Morris you the director of administration. Here today you're among the most qualified for this job, but we didn't give it to you because you're doing a good job now. Okay. Good. Okay, this thing such. It's the Weblex, bringing secure communications to the World Wide Web. Where am I going to? English. 
four, according to King's Quest. Four? Maybe, maybe it's required. Hi, Dad. Besides working late and buckling into the stress load, I'm up to my armpits and paperwork. I hate when I'm up to my armpits and paperwork. And blah, blah, blah. Why am I still here? Blah, blah. Chin up. You're there because you're good at it. And Wonks used to say this and you did that. Get a good book. Maybe you and David should get back together. Ah, so she broke up with someone named David. Interesting. It's a weird piece of advice, though. Like, you're sad. Remember that guy you broke up with? Get back, back with him. Sounds weird. Dad, I'm working to be the director of s and but someone would rather have a man doing it. I don't want to mention any names. <laughs> Pete Sterling, President's Towel Boy, Director of Askism. <laughs> okay. Not big on Pete Sterling. I know how you feel. Warhurst was a lead ops officer when I was there. If anyone can help, he can. Sterling wants a suit, always a suit. Knight or Kit was the right choice. Blah, 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 blah. Patty took me mountain biking. And can't believe it. Sure, it's mountain biking. Anything about mom? They passed me over for that job, so I unplugged my camera. Because that's a thing you do when you get passed over for a job, is you pull the camera feed. Uh, talk to Gene about the promotion. Most people aren't promoted because they're valuable where they are. Maybe Gene will give you some time off. Okay. that interesting you ask well I will show you in a minute after I don't go here because that's not where I wanted to go Thorn, come into the alley I must talk with you that doesn't sound shady I cannot be seen with you I but take this campaign manager it should Sherman be Ops. interesting reading Things are not what they seem. Think. Who benefits most from Dubansky's death? Polyakov. And who are Polyakov's cronies? Things have not changed as much here as everyone thinks. The hammer and sickle still weighs heavily on our lives. Aren't you supposed to be in with the Mafia? And I feel like Cher Cherbinov benefits more, more than Polyakov does. Very strange. Very strange indeed. We'll look at Case that Officer right Thorn. Well Field Blues. I found another set of field codes. These are in the news group rec.music.blues. It's a pair of messages. From a Fred Vorbel at Georgetown University. I checked them out, no such person. Imagine to break Vorbel's field codes. Listen up. One reads operative to London. The other, operative to Moscow, Raven captured. This matches your travel itinerary. I smell a mole. Yes, it does. Thorn, before you get too cozy with your fellow team members, keep in mind that where this mole is concerned, nobody is above suspicion. Agreed, Bill. Okay, so that's why it's interesting. 
that Jamie and David are or were in a relationship. If we check the Eclipse tool, so we can already rule out, in general, s and administration, Russian ops, even though they show up on that one. Itinerary, everyone on our team knew my itinerary. Then if we look at the other two things, Procat, the people in charge knew and David knew. Peg, Jamie knew and Frank knew. But if you put together the fact that Jamie and David one of them could have either told the other or overseen the other one's notes or whatever while they were having a, a little bit of alone time. It could easily be one of them. And we know that Jamie has issues with Sterling and the CIA and the camera for whatever reason. So it's not conclusive, but it's curious. Yes? Yes. All right, let's take a look at the different data we've collected recently. Okay, John Blake's Encyclopedia Procat. To the reader. Spy novelist, I just believe that blah, blah, blah. I'm retired from six, but I continue to collect notes on operatives for hire. This compendium group in my study of Procat means for hire in Russian, <laughs> which is good to know. <coughs> okay. Ying Chung Wang, also known as Debbie Gibson. Fluent in a bunch of languages. Also an expert trafficker of data and information. American intelligence recruited her. She had some dealings with Janus, which I believe we listened to those great audio calls earlier. Just for the opulent. She did some stuff. Da, da, da. Whatever. Next. Oh, that's an interesting note. She's able to withstand extreme interrogations. We'll see. We'll, we shall see. Cadmus Fry, also known as Ichabod. Narcotic smuggler, was in the army. Shrapnel wound caused psychosis. I don't know, disappeared into drug lord evaporation and then fucked the drug lord over and Procat took over. Grendel, real name unknown. Hey, we know something he doesn't doesn't know. We know who Grendel is. Espionage, kidnapping, stealth operative. He may have worked for the DEA, though he has never confirmed this. Knows that he worked with Cadmus Fry and the Menendez Shakedown. Not sure if he's still alive. He did something during the World Trade Center bombing. Seemed strange. So, Al Qaeda hired Procat. Harmonica, you don't know this guy's name either. Tom, Thomas J. Phillips. Rumored to be a defector from the CIA. Details aren't available. Has worked for the IRA and several state militias. Used the harmonica to blow up the Ukrainian when the Kremlin official. Also, that also known for treating female victims with, quote, special violence. That sounds really rapey. And just creepy. I don't I don't know about that. Rajiv Jalabad. Good old kneecaps. Look at that dude's expression. Dude has a really just evil expression. I think it's some combination of how long his mouth is and the stash. I don't, I don't want to mess with that dude. Trained in the Egyptian army, served as a mercenary in various armed forces, he was the right hand to Mikhail Melnikov. Okay. 
Maxwell. We know apparently nothing about him. Really nothing. Nothing at all. Mikhail Melnikov. Founder of Procat. Torture specialist. Was in the KGB. You'll be happy to know I'm not going to try to read out the Russian. Butcher of the Mujahideen. Blah, blah, blah. John Blake maybe killed him. Mirage. I intercepted one of his transmissions over the ARPANET in 92, which was not called the ARPANET in 1992, but sure. And the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay. So that's maybe the leader of ProCap. Edward Mintz, also known as El Bravo. Check secrets of money laundering, PhD, investments. He may have caused a stock market crash, apparently. He lives in Mexico. Okay. And he apparently hangs out with Fidel Castro with other Wall Street criminals. Because that's a state of political affairs that makes sense. Samir Bursara. Hey, this is Onyx. Hey, that's fascinating. Arms trading, WMDs, blah, blah, blah. Worked with the CIA and the Mujahideen supply effort. Strict vegetarian, compulsive neatness. His handcuffs wherever he goes to keep constantly attached to his briefcase. It's an odd detail, but okay. Albert Proust, also known as Louis Clermont, and the unfrench sounding name Bruce Bisbon. Former bon vivant of the Soho art scene, ran across him in New York. Okay, he did something. He looks kind of like Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt guy. French. French Brad Pitt. He has a taste for wine and Dutch masters. Felix Cody. He's dead. Who knew he was known as Razorback? I didn't. If we'd learned that earlier, I'd managed to forget it. He worked for the SVR, and he likes vodka and television. Okay, there's some things we didn't know, and some things we did, and the wrong menu. Okay, let's see the dossier that I think her name is Lena gave us. Ah, Yuri Gromchevsky, our old friend who still looks like Eric Bogosian. Um, duh, he knows some people. That's good. He has a son named Piotr. Right, report to the Major General from Joseph Morava for the KGB. Operation Reaper. Also, he's, his name is Reaper, and it's Operation Reaper. That's confusing. Report the success of our operative Reaper with our endeavors in East Berlin. We were able to learn of American treachery. The spy trade we were expecting was nothing more than an elaborate trap by the CIA to capture KGB official. Reaper destroyed the Yankee plan, losing the trust of the case officer, then let him on a raid, burnt hinges off the door, and kicked it open. The operative was fooled. I don't understand what happened here. There was a spy trade of some kind. And the CIA was planning on reneging. So Reaper led someone from the CIA on a fake raid, apparently. And then everyone went home. Okay. I don't... Thank you, I guess. I don't really Case understand. Officer Thorne, welcome. Mission directives for Case Officer right, Thorne. We need to investigate Birdsong's residence, and we need to track Birdsong, and then we'll work on Onyx. Uh, let's go to his residence first. 
The first time I played this, I couldn't figure out what the fuck you were supposed to do here. I never noticed. The very first thing we had, the only thing we had at the beginning of the game, was this thing that looks like an eyeglass case. But if you open it, it's a set of tools. Lockpicks, they are occasionally referred to as. Alright, now we're in his shockingly blue apartment. Look for clues, we've got ceramic cowboy man, a super tassely lamp, which is good. Got another ceramic cowboy man. Got a grizzly bear, maybe? Brown bear? I don't, I don't know the bears. Some sort of bear in the mountains. Probably in the west again. And some more mountains. Definitely sensing a western, um, American western thing in here. Big Sky, your guide to Montana real estate. I wonder if that's meant to be a reference to uh, the Hunt for Red October. But it's like we have seen one. That's what I got. Okay. So far, whoops. So far, useless. Nothing of interest in his house whatsoever. Do I have to pick the lock again? Oh, I locked up on the way out. He did not look in the kitchen, though. The other room before I left here. So let's just check that out. Thorn! Well, hello, <laughs> Thank God I found you. Where have you been? Damn thing isn't working. I had to go by the safe house and see Max Foster. He said you'd be here. He did. So, talk to me. Any new leads on ProCat? Yes, Max Foster's a woman. Die. Sorted. Now, the weird thing here is that he's gone. He should be lying right there laying right there. He's not. He's gone. He's nowhere. And there's nothing we can even look at over in the kitchen. So we'll just go home now. But yeah, so that's interesting. Case Officer Thorne. Welcome. Tough call. Listen, I know sometimes you've got to make tough calls, but you did the right thing. I'm glad you figured it out. Lang reported he was going to meet with Harmonica. Looks like they cut a deal. Probably saw that Parker, too. Let me report those guys filed. They're still in the ops manager. Mission I'm direct. pretty sure we've listened to all of these reports. Yep, he was on his way to meet with Harmonica. Yes, we listened to all of those. Mission direct. I'm not 100% sure if we listened to Scotty's, but it, she just says that Scotty was shot the same as the other two. So, unimportant. Alright, we are now caught up on operational directives, human intelligence directives. Well, we gotta track down Birdsong, and then track down Onyx. Okay, let's track down Birdsong. And then we'll call this a video here. So we'll listen to the call first between Birdsong and Foster. Please, calm down. Okay, now, start again. Just from the beginning. I have left Moscow. It's too dangerous. What are you talking about? What happened? I can feel them getting closer. It is only a matter of time before they know. Relax, Birdsong. And how do you know? You have me telling lies in all faces. I can tell the truth from lies no more. Everything is, is blurred. Let's meet as soon as possible. No. No more secret meetings. Now please do not try to find me. Forgive me. Okay. So that's what went down there. 
Now let's see. Case Access Officer update. Thorne. Update. Welcome. Controlled yeah. access authenticated. To give us Welcome. I'm not sure if that's actually Power play sure. compartment. Mm. Doesn't really appear so. Or if it is, it's fucking buried in here someplace. 201 file. Yeah, not, not useful. Okay, let's go back into this. Okay, so here we are going to again use... Wait, unless I can get to his dossier in here. New. No. Okay, so here we're going to again use the search tools that we used earlier on the InfoSci security model to grab bits of audio and have the computer tell us what's in them. We will then use this to try to track down where the fuck is Birdsong. God damn it. Boop. Boop. There we go. You can't feed the computer too much or else it finds nothing like that. But if you don't feed it enough, it also won't find anything. There are, I believe, four background sounds that are relevant. We're going to try to get all four of those, and then we can put them on the map. Okay, so number one is a church bell. Good. I'll show you the intel on these after I find a couple more. I don't know if you guys were able to hear these in the background or not, but you are able to hear all these things in the background as you listen to the regular tape pretty, pretty clearly. So it's not complete bullshit. Good. We are just one thing short, I believe. Hopefully it's coming up. I think you can also, if you just isolate over spoken words, I think you can pull up their voices. We can try that in a moment. Really want to find a certain other thing though here. Might be here. So pull. Damn it. I think it's in this clutter here. Let's find out. No. Maybe. Yes. That is exactly what I wanted. Okay, now we'll try real quick to see if we can isolate voices. I really don't recall if you can or not in this, this particular objective. Survey says... Yes. And let's see if we can grab Max. She's got to be over here someplace. Is her? What are you talking about? What happened? Yeah, we'll just grab that. See if we can identify Maxine. Yes, we can. Okay. So, now let's look at the things we've isolated here. We got a 10 ton church bell. Right. Ten ton church bell, isolated from your criminal phone call, similar to one in New York. There's also actually another clue on this, kind of. I can tell what time it is. Probably. So it's four o'clock, maybe, uh, maybe. We know from the source here that it was reported at 
essentially 9 a.m. GMT. So that would put it at GMT minus 5. So that may or may not be useful. Got a passenger aircraft. The evolution, evolution. Never been able to say that word super well. Got an Uzbeki Mountain Sparrow. Sure is. Got a number thirty-four electric tram from the Zansky Tractor Works. Have Mr. Birdsong. I have left Moscow. It's too dangerous. Let's see who he talks about. Code name Birdsong. Uh, I didn't remember that his re real name was Evgeny Mlodnov. It's a good name. I like the name Evgeny. Okay. Agent updated. Blah blah blah. Okay, whatever. And then Max Foster, we know who Max Foster is. Foster, Maxine Marie. Also known as Claw. Okay, so now that we have this intel... Linking to National Reconnaissance Office. Why, thank you. We can view several cities in Russia where he's known to have contacts. We can overlay them features. So all of them have jet aircraft flying to, to them. All of them, except for Irkutsk and Dushanbe, have streetcars. All of them have church bells. Dushanbe and only Dushanbe has the Uzbeki Mountain Sparrow. So let's, let's take a look at a couple things here first. Dushanbe, Republic of Tajikistan. Population, 500,000. Local time, GMT plus five. Ah, I did that backwards with the G with the GMT, didn't I? So we ascertained it was probably four o'clock, and it was local time nine. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a clue, because that would mean we'd have to be at GMT plus seven. I don't think anywhere is far enough. Let's just check that. Way. Linking to National Irkutsk, Russian Federation, population 600,000, local time GMT plus 8. Oh, wait, no, apparently it is. Linking to National In Reconnaissance Novosibirsk, Op Novosibirsk Russian eight. Federation, population 1.4 million, local time GMT plus 7. Okay, so Novosibirsk then would be the only linking one to National Reconnaissance Office that has the right time, and it's got jets and streetcars and church bells, but no birds. Novosibirsk, Russian out. Federation. Jets cover. Pretty much everywhere he might be, except for the Inorganic Chemistry Institute. That place sounds like a barrel of laughs. Streetcars. Not super close to the Kaminsky residence there, but very close to that Kaminsky residence. The Oksyevskaya Hotel. And the Suvorov residence. How about church bells? Church bells kind of knocks out the hotel that I'm not going to butcher the pronunciation again. It still leaves the Kamensky residence and the Suvorov res residence. Only thing we're missing is the birds, and this one is right across the street from a zoo. I think we're going to go with that one. Opening email gateway. Next. Found bird song. He's in. At Nicholas Suvorov residence. Thorn. Message sent. See if 
we got that one. Hey. Good job finding Birdsaw. Thanks, Matt. I'll have some of my people pick him up. Good chat. All right. I think Mission directives for on Case on Officer Thorne. Caught up on humans. And we're down to looking for Onyx. Which will be next episode of Spycraft, the great game. I'm Stefan, I and Scott. Cheers.